Hi, this is Josie Cat, and we're here at the 2013 Viscera Film Festival. It's held at the Grauman Egyptian Theater on Hollywood Boulevard in Hollywood, California. Tonight we're honoring women in horror film and women horror film filmmakers. We have Heidi from Viscera Film Festival. Hi there. I'm very happy to be interviewed. Thank you. Well, thank you, well, thank you for, for doing being here. And so what are you most excited about for tonight? I am most excited about several things. Number one, we have an incredible lineup. It's like the best lineup we've ever had. It just keeps getting better and better every year. So I can't wait to see the audience reactions to some of these movies. So I'm very excited. And also, we're showing the world premiere teaser trailer of a documentary called Unearthed and Untold, which is about the process of making Pet Cemetery, which was Amazing. directed by Mary Lambert. And Mary Lambert and Denise Crosby, who starred in the film, and Mary directed it, are introducing the trailer. So, oh, and also Jennifer Lynch, the director of such films as Surveillance, Chained, Hiss, Boxing Helena, Love Jennifer. is receiving the Inspiration Award, which is an award we give to an established director who inspires other women to go out there and do their own projects. So. so what advice would you give to an inspiring film director or filmmaker? Make a movie. Just make it, even if you have no budget, just make the movie and then put it out there and let people see it and it's all uphill from there. That's the, that's the thing. If you, can, if you can go from not making anything to making something, then you've done it. You're already halfway there. And is there anything in closing you'd like to tell our audience? I would just like to tell everybody thank you for watching and I'm, I want everybody to be aware that women are doing amazing things in horror films and really, some really positive, creative, wonderful things. And I just hope that everybody knows that there are a lot of women horror directors and that I, you know, and they're out there and, and I hope people look them out and, and try to find out more about them. Oh, I have one more question. Sure. Okay. Would you consider bringing in music videos? You know, that's a good question. And we have debated that in the past. Um, yes, I think if there was a music video that was that was unique and fit in with the rest of the lineup, that yeah, we absolutely. You have a new movie coming out? I have a new movie. I have a new movie that I'm hoping to start shooting in uh, September, October, November, somewhere around there, uh, starring Tim Roth called A Fall from Grace. Also has Vincent D'Onofrio, Forrest Whitaker, Paz Vega. Oh. We got some really, really beautiful people in it, and it's uh, another romantic comedy from Jen Lynch. Ah, I love it. I love it. And um, for aspiring, since this this festival is about women in film and creating films, um, tell tell our audience how a woman or anyone at that would get into making films on a low budget. <laughs> You know, budgets are such a weird thing, and budget has become such a bad word. Um, you know, if you can go shopping on a budget, you can make a film on a budget. And uh, it's common sense, and don't be afraid. And when you are afraid, just go. Just do it anyway. So admit you're afraid and go. I mean, literally, I've been shooting things, short films and commercials, in my backyard for the past two months because I can and it's free. And essentially, it's the price of food for everyone. And um, it, it's, you. everyone's got a story to tell. Some people have several stories. Tell them, don't let the money stop you. You don't have to be someone uh, to make a film. You know, we all have a voice. Speak and create the way you talk to a friend or a lover. And uh, don't give up. Don't give up, that's good advice. I mean, and everyone nowadays has at least some sort of phone and exactly. they can practice on Instagram now. <laughs> exactly, you know, I mean, if, and, and truly, a film is a series of moments and the fact that you can capture on your film or even on your little instant camera, you know, little videos, compile those and a moment is a mood and before you know it, you've got a thread of moods and you're telling a story. Well, that is very inspirational oh, and you. congratulations on your inspiration you award so I'm tonight. I'm so tickled that I'm inspiring to people. It's like that alone has uh, made my year. We're here with Brink Steven. Hi. So tell us, what number of film are we on? I know it's over 100. Yeah, I keep saying 150. Um, so many of the movies I do, it takes them a long time to get distributed. 
so I never really know what number I'm on, but I'd just say 150. I did t 10 new movies last year. 10 new movies? Yeah, I played oh a, played a The busiest girl in Hollywood. Just about, I think so. Um, I played a demon in Disciples. I got killed by demons in a couple other movies. And I played the President of the United States in Silicon Assassin. That is pretty cool. Oh, and I was a serial killer's mother in Head Cases. Um, and I was an invalid who they're trying to scare to death in Die, Sister, Die. So it's been a busy time. Which one was your favorite to play? Uh, I like being the president because I wasn't a very good president. I was kind of a dictator. And uh, I got to kill people with guns. <laughs> That's fun. <laughs> How many different ways have you killed people? Oh, well, I used to be the perpetual victim. I mean, I was shot with guns, shot with arrows, torn apart by demons, throat cut with a razor blade. And then they found there were more fun things they could do with me rather than kill me. So I became the, the villain. And um, It's nice I, playing the villain off. Yeah, I really, I much prefer that. Um, I think, though, in the 150 movies, I added it up one time, and I've died in 38 movies, and I've killed people in 21 movies. So it's kind of almost equal. <laughs> have you ever thought of making your own film? Yeah, I have. I've directed uh, already last year my first movie and I'm about to direct another one um, that later in the year. So that's a start and I've co-produced several documentaries. Mm -hmm. And the one that you just made last year, what's the name of it and where can we see it? Uh, it's called Personal Demons. It's still in post-production. And the next one, the working title is All Hallows Eve, but that may change. Mm -hmm. Very cool. So do you think that's going to be your future? I hope so. I'm, having been an actress for like 30 years, I've really learned a lot, and I like being behind the camera and writing and directing, so hopefully that will be my future. Mm. And did you write them yourself, or did you have a writer write it for you? I've written and sold maybe six horror scripts. I did Teenage Exorcist, and I wrote Personal Demons. Do you have your own production company? No, not yet, but I always uh, say that I'm Think Brink Inc. I love it. That's so perfect. Great. Well, thank you. I'm so happy to be here tonight. This is wonderful to celebrate women in horror. I'm so excited. I'm with Bill Mosley. We've actually met at Monster Palooza or one of those Good. Fangoria, yeah. but you meet a million people. You are look awesome. <laughs> thank you. I, so, I only wish I could have brought some cheese. I would have grated it on your, your necklace. Oh, boy. Tell us about some of your new projects. I mean, I'm a huge fan. Um, I know all of your work and your work with Rob Zombie and um, so. Um, I what's just new? I just came back from uh, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, where it's hot and humid, and uh, with uh, actually with Brea Grant, who just passed this way, um, and we worked on a movie called Smothered, and it was written and directed by John Schneider, who played Bo Dukes in the Dukes of Hazard, among other things. And uh, John wrote a horror comedy. It stars Kane Hodder and uh, an old Leatherface, R.A. Mihailov, and, and a Michael Myers, no Don Shanks, anyway, uh, me, a couple of others. And uh, we just had a ball shooting yeah. this horror comedy. And I, I think it'll probably come out sometime in early 2014. I love her. Oh, my God, I love you. I love this outfit, everything that's happening. I'm a huge fan. I'm a. I watch Dexter all the time and Heroes. Oh, very cool. Thank you. So, um, Bill was just telling us about the new movie, mm -hmm. and tell us about your part. Well, I don't know how much I'm supposed to say about my part, but basically, these guys go out to a trailer park and they sort of meet their worst nightmares. I would like to think. Yes. And I'm involved in that. Oh, you sound like. I, do you play a little vixen? We laugh all the way. They do. It's very funny. It's a very funny movie, but I think it'll also be scary and cool. You're are you a comedic actress? I don't know. I mean, I I like to think so. I don't know. What do you think? <laughs> well, I thought I thought you were I thought you were really fun on Dexter. You brought you brought some comedy to to Dexter. Yeah, I tend to do um, be in more dramatic shows, but bring more of a comedy. I more of the comedic characters in those shows for sure. Very cool. I, I like I like the darkness, like the the black comedy that you that you did and did she does in smothered and she does it very well actually she's very funny other than smothered are there any other projects that are coming out um, i have a movie that i directed that's out on itunes right now called best friends forever it's uh, an apocalyptic road trip movie that um, i'm in also 
Excellent. And do you have any directing in the future? Uh, no directing, uh, but I do have another movie called The Church. It's coming out probably in about five months. Tell us about your latest project. Yes, it's uh, The Meeting, which is a short film, and it's about four serial killers who confess their biggest sins in a, in a meeting. And we get to see that here tonight, right? Yes, it's the last film tonight. And how did you come up with this concept? I was actually the series director on a true crime show on Investigation Discovery called Very Bad Men. And this is actually inspired by that because all I did was profile serial killers and psychopaths. So your Google history must really <laughs> look insane. I wonder whether or not I'm on various like FBI hit lists and that sort of thing, exactly. What was the strangest that you found in your research? You know what, I had never really dealt with arsonists and we had this gay arsonist that I was really, I thought that was really interesting and he had actually developed this entire romance around seeing firefighters and seeing men running out and into his arms and that's why he was setting these fires and I thought that was so bizarre and yet kind of romantic in a weird way so that, that did you interview anyone that was in prison? I did not. Um, basically, we interview the FBI agents, the investigators, and some of the victims. And sometimes the FBI agents would give us interrogation footage, and that's what we used. Did you use any of it, or you just used it for research? Uh, for research, and we'd always put in a little bit if we had it. So if there was, if there was inter inter interrogation footage or some confession, I tried to work that into the series. So what was the worst crime that you saw? Oh, probably the, we had a couple of dismemberment ones, but one which was really sad during the 90s in New York where the serial killer was actually dismembering these very sweet men and he was a gay serial killer as well and it was just finding body parts, you know, dismembered in different chunks and it was, it was heartbreaking actually. So. But he didn't eat him like Dahmer. No, he wasn't a Dahmer, but you know, just just really quite grim. And actually, he did on one put the penis of the man in his mouth and so it was quite... Wow. Yeah. So... You're doing children's projects next, I right? I do. I do lovely things. It's a sing-along. And so, no, it is. Actually, the meeting is my first comedy. I had to get it out of my head. So it's it's a dark comedy rather than, a, like, a really dark serial killer film. Do you have nightmares? Never, actually. I get it out of the way. It's gone, you know? So I'd rather give you nightmares. <laughs> That's brilliant. Um, so, what's your next project? My next project is a feature film. We're a month away from finishing, and it's called Evangeline, and uh, it's based on a short film called Doll Parts that was here in Bistra 2011. Well, congratulations, and did you write the story? I did. So, it's, uh, I wrote it and directed it, so it's, it's, uh, hopefully it should be done in a month. How did you get into filmmaking? Uh, I started as a lawyer. God, God knows. <laughs> You know what? That's actually a really good thing in this industry. Yeah, it started from the finance side of things, so that's where it actually, and I, I guess, you know, again, maybe I know serial killers better for that reason. <laughs> Definitely a lot of sharks. And um, what advice can you give to young filmmakers who are starting out? Just pick up the camera and do it. It's practice, get, you know, and try to work with people better than you so you can learn. I think that's really important that you're not the one-man show. You really have to get, it's, it's a collaboration. Absolutely, a team. You need a team. Who would your, be your dream person to work with as far as directing? Oh God, some of them are, are dead. Um, Guillermo del Toro is a hero. I love David Cronenberg. He's Canadian as well. I'm Canadian. And uh, yeah, I, I, I guess, um, oh no, I'm, I'm blanking, but you know. And uh, Michael Haneke, I actually love his films. He's uh, Austrian. He, did, he does all those wrenching uh, European films that I just, you know, they're devastating. And I, I, I think if I can leave you devastated and depressed, I, I, I'm aiming for that. <laughs> and who's your, who's your dream lead man that you would cast? Right now, Mads Mikkelsen. He's, he's like, nice. He's, he's Hannibal. My God. He's like, nice. And do you prefer um, movies over TV, or would you like to do some TV work? I would love to do TV. I'm actually really inspired by what I'm seeing in horror in TV, like Hannibal. I'm really loving um, just the longer series, like being able to do a mini series, maybe. And I've been watching a lot of the BBC ones as well, like Luther and it, you know all of those. It's 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 been fant fabulous. How are you? Good. How are you? So, Ellen, tell us about your next project. Well, I'm actually presently opening a play tonight called Whore's Bath at the Zombie Joe Underground Theater in the Valley. Um, so I'll be 
going back and forth. I'm kind a of lot crazy. of running around. A lot of running around. And the fun thing about it is that in my Bloody Valentine, I died. I was lifted up from my neck and thrown into the shower. And in this play, just by coincidence, same thing. Same thing happens. Isn't that fun? What are the chances of that? <laughs> yeah, seriously. And that we open on the same night. It's very funny. Yeah. So you're very busy tonight. And yeah. what else do you have? Um, tell us how many days is the play going to be going on? Uh, well, the play is uh, opening tonight and running for four to six weeks. It depends if we get extended. Probably eight. Um, and uh, yeah, and I just finished a horror short. I'm like blanking on the name of it right now. I'm sorry, oh, Vestiges. And you're acting in it, yes. right? Yes. Yeah, so I'm kind of all over the map. I, I, I have directed and I have, but I'm acting right now. I'm really enjoying acting. I so we really could look forward to seeing your next yes. directal De debut here. My, <laughs> my next directing debut here, or, or no, probably I prefer to star. <laughs> I prefer to be in the movie right now because to be honest with you, directing and producing a uh, short uh, a film of any kind, it's a lot of work. And so I really appreciate the women that have put this together and, and that have gotten together and made these wonderful movies because it's not easy. What is your current project? Um, well, uh, the last project I finished is a project called The Bates Haunting. I produced that and it's being released this August, so that's very exciting. And then the next project I'm uh, working on is going to be um, a project directed by Danny Draven and it's going to be a horror film that's still, we're doing a working title. Um, I also did a film with David Dakota this spring uh, called Bonnie and Clyde Justified. So it was a Oh, and what did you play? Did you play Bonnie? No, I played Blanche Barrow, but it's great to play those historical figures. I had a lot of fun with that one. Was it a lot of research? How did you prepare? Yeah, I definitely researched it. Um, I looked at a lot of photos and tried to recreate her look and read a lot about her life. She had a fascinating life. And, um, and Bonnie and Clyde's been, you know, there are a couple of film renditions of it, so I watched those and kind of tried to take what I could that was useful out of it, yeah. Faye Dunaway, you have to love her. <laughs> yeah, she's amazing. <laughs> and wasn't the clothing just amazing? It was, and we got a chance to wear a lot of like vintage clothing. It was all vintage um, from the 40s, and it was, a, it was a really fun shoot that we did out there. That sounds really fun. And when does that come out? I'm not sure if the exact release date. I know we just locked picture on it, so it's sort of in post-production. And then we'll see exactly when they decide to like put it out there. Fun, fun. So where can we find you on the internet? Um, well, I have a website, jeanluisosullivan.com. You can also see my film at thebateshaunting.com. Great. And tell us about uh, The Bates Haunting. The Bates Haunting um, is my first feature film producing project. We shot at the Bates Motel and Haunted Hayride in Gradyville, Pennsylvania, and which is an amazing, amazing haunted house and an amazing location. And we, um, we shot there over the course of two falls, and it's about a haunted attraction where people start actually getting murdered, but no one notices because it's a haunted attraction. So a little bit tongue-in-cheek, very gory. It was so much fun. And what was your inspiration for this? Well, I have a friend who's worked there for a long time, and I grew up in that hometown, so I always thought it would be like an amazing place to make a movie. And haunted houses are really, really, like I love them, but they're really scary. And I always thought that like a crazy person could sort of like open a haunted house and really like kill people and sort of, you know, keep it going for a little while. Um, because there's so much like gore and blood, it's like what's real, what's fake, that sort of dichotomy. And how was it going back home and seeing your friends? Um, it was great. You know, I don't think I could have made this film um, anywhere else. I have an amazing network of friends and family in my hometown and people really went out of their way to help us. So if I make another movie, I'm definitely making it in, in rural Pennsylvania. It's just a great place to shoot. That's excellent. You know, supporting your hometown. And did you cast any of your friends? Yeah, I was able to cast some Philadelphia theater actors, which was really great. Um, you know, people who'd been my teachers actually came back and acted in the film, which was fun. And then I had some like uh, sort of peers, some classmates and colleagues who I was able to bring into the film. And that was probably the best part of it to me was to be able to like my line producer I've known since high school. You know, it's like and to work with like all of these friends and stuff is just like the best. And what kind of advice can you give to aspiring filmmakers? Um, it can be scary to like sort of bite off more than you can chew to make like a feature film. Pick your project really carefully. Choose the people you work with really carefully. But like, 
don't be afraid. Like, you don't have to spend a million dollars to make a movie that looks like you spent a million dollars. Just, like, spend money to save money and be really careful about the projects you choose, and you'll be just fine. Hi, we're here with Betsy. Hi, how are you? I'm doing good, thank you. Betsy's best known for her acting in the Saw movies. And tell us what you have going on next. Um, I have a few movies that I've done recently. Uh, Knock 'em Dead with uh, David, who's here, David Dakota, and um, Nonstop coming out on Lifetime next month. So that's exciting. And tell us about Knock 'em Dead. Um, Knock 'em Dead was uh, a black comedy, <laughs> and it was a lot of fun. A lot of funny, funny people in it. Radon Chong and great cast. Just had a, a super fun time. Tell us about your latest project. My latest project, the next project I have coming up next month is a book called The Last Goddamn Hollywood Movie. It's about uh, the last Hollywood film crew making the last Hollywood movie in the radioactive crater, formerly known as Los Angeles, right after the fucking bombs drop. That sounds like a true story. <laughs> I hope not. And what's your latest project? I am working on a script that's actually based on my short that won a Viscera two years ago. And it's a vampire tale set in Los Angeles, but it's a feminist vampire story. Love it. And it's about a woman who's very sexy and kills a lot of men, but ends up using her vampire powers for good. Uh, tell us about the film that won the award. Uh, it was uh, also a vampire movie in Los Angeles, but it was about a struggling musician who falls for the wrong girl. She's a vampire, and she turns him into a vampire, and he goes around and he turns other people into vampires. And it's really a, a metaphor for narcissism in Los Angeles. So that one's a bit more of a downer than the feature length version will be, but definitely a commentary. I know a lot of blood suckers here in this town. What is your personal favorite vampire movie? Shadow of a Vampire. I love that movie. It's with Willem Dafoe. It's fantastic. If you guys haven't seen it, you should check it out. The Hunger is also a great vampire film. Uh, were you recently cast in a vampire movie? Let's talk about that first. Yes, ma'am. David Dakota, who invited us tonight and was a judge. Um, his friend wrote the movie, My Stepbrother is a Vampire, and I got to star as Victor the Vampire. When does the movie come out? September, I believe. September. Okay. And I have to ask you about Survivor since you're the Survivor winner. Tell us about it. Was it brutal? Was it easy? Did you think you had it in the, in the can? It was easy. No, it wasn't easy, and it was brutal. Um, I lost 30 pounds, but it was, it's 39 days in the jungle. It was in Nicaragua, 2010. So the casting process is crazy, you know, and then going down there is crazy. It all feels like a dream. And then you watch it on TV during the fall. And you're back home on your couch. <laughs> yeah, it's great. Um, you sleep in bamboo, so it rains all night. In the morning, you're back. You know, it just hurts. And then you gotta, you're basically left to your thoughts because you don't have a cell phone, you don't have food, you're on an island. And how many days? 39 days. When you first got there, did, did you scope out who was, you thought, I'm gonna get rid of these people? I did not do that, and I think that is why I've stuck around till the end. Because if you jump on there as a big player, everybody knows that you're a big player. What director would you love to work with? Well, Heath Ledger is not around anymore. I like him because he played the Joker, and then the jo when Jack Nicholson played the Joker in Batman in 1987, he's in excess. He's throwing out $100 bills to need you tonight. And I think that Heath Ledger should have played. Michael Hutchins, the singer of NXS. They're very similar. They look alike. They're both Australian, look alike. They both died in sketchy situations. Yikes. Um, I like Johnny Depp. What director would you like to work with? Who would be your dream? I was going to say David Dakota. Yeah, but I, um, I'm, I'm, I know Gus Van Sant from just living in LA and around, and I, I think he's really cool and he likes the hippies. Yeah, he likes the 1960s rock and roll vibe, so I would love to work with... Do a period piece? Maybe play a, a rocker? Yeah, the electric Kool-Aid acid test about the hippies and all through the 60s. We've got the founder of Muscle Wolf. Hey, I'm Marv. Nice to meet you. We were just talking about the reality show. Yeah, um, something we put together about a year ago based on our escapades at horror film conventions and making indie horror films for the last five years. and. Um, 
we shot a sizzle reel and we got picked up by ADA management out of Miami, Florida. And within a month we were picked up by Authentic Entertainment who does Honey Boo Boo. Our, our producers are the same producers who do Honey Boo Boo. And we had a major meeting with a major network about a month ago and we're just waiting to hear. So, yeah. Excellent. That's something I'm going to look forward to. I hope it happens. So tell me, how did you put this together? You were going to horror conventions? Well, we have a group of five guys. Uh, we're all bodybuilders. We're all... Where's the, where's the other three? Well, we have the two of us who are here in L.A. Jared and I are here in L.A. And we have two identical uh, bodybuilding twins. And they're one's in Grand Rapids, one's in Boston. And then we have another bodybuilder in um, Cincinnati. All, all actors. Um, we started traveling together to conventions, getting asked to the conventions. We kind of got dubbed the Chippendales of horror, which was kind of cheesy, and Chippendales got really pissed off at us and sent me a really threatening phone call. But um, So from there, um, the escapades that we've had at the conventions are crazy. And we decided to shoot, you know, what happens at these horror film conventions and when we shoot these low-budget horror films. And it was so crazy that uh, the people at Authentic watched it. They watched our sizzle reel, our, and they said not a single person got up and left. And they said, what the fuck? <laughs> Excuse me. But in a, in a good way. In a good way. So... So, do you guys just kind of crash the party? Uh, we have been known yeah. to do that. <laughs> we, especially crashing the green room with all the food. Yes. So, yes, that, that's... We, you clear it out. We've been kicked out yes. because of uh, eating too much, especially our bodybuilding twins. Yeah. They, they shovel nonstop. That's so much fun. So, tell us about uh, your most recent movies. Um... Let's see. Well, the ones that I've been in recently, um, uh, about a month ago, I finished with um, Human Centipede 3. Uh, I did oh, some stunt work with that. Awesome. That was a lot, yeah, a lot of fun. Um, actually, when I, in February, actually. What March, part of the body were you? No, I wasn't in the actual centipede. Okay. Everybody asked that. No, I wasn't in the centipede. I did um, did some, some stunt work. It, it was actually a lot of fun. My, I heard it's grueling to be part of the body. Were the a other actors complaining? Um, they did that at the very end, and I like I had already been wrapped for the entire shoot. But part of the reason why I didn't want to be in it is because I knew it was going to be so grueling. So it's yeah, it's not easy. So tell us about your recent projects. Oh. Well, I just uh, shot a movie called Jurassic Block with Sean Kane, which I think is going to premiere on the Sci-Fi Network, and um, a lot of velociraptors and dinosaurs and all that kind of fun stuff. Um, and then uh, Jared and I both got cast in Felissa Rose's film, uh, Death by Solicitation. Uh, a very, really cool, a really cool script about doctors who do a little bit more with their patients than they probably should. So, in a cannibalistic um, way. In a cannibalistic not a way, not a sexual way. Although that could be a whole different avenue. So. I had a dentist grab my boob. A dentist grabbed your boobs? Yes. He was a very smart dentist with good eyesight. 